Okay, everybody, we are here at Westmoreland and Cedar Terrace. They were established as a neighborhood watch program in 1993. They have 35 members. The coordinator for Cedar Terrace in Westmoreland is Edith Wilson. But as many of you may know, the late Shirley Coles established this program, started it, got it developed, and got the people involved. So once again, we say thank you to Shirley Coles. She was just a fantastic person. Now let's go and meet the people of Cedar Terrace and Westmoreland. We're here at the beautiful Union Street Missionary Baptist Church. Okay, once again, a very special thank you to all the wonderful people of Cedar Terrace and Westmoreland. I mean, they were having a fantastic national night out, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. Everybody was so in sync and just having a wonderful time, gathering around, eating. They said they were happy to be inside of the church and have some air conditioning rather than being in the park. So, <laughs> so we thank them. Let's hear from the people of Cedar Terrace and Westmoreland. Well, joining us now is our Housing and Development Division Director, Diane Morris. And Diane, uh, I noticed that you hopped on the trolley tonight, and you're not in a, a law enforcement department within the city of Danville. Why did you decide to take part in National Night Out? Well, my department's community development, and we work a lot with the different neighborhoods, trying to provide different programs to them, let them know what's available to them throughout the city, work with them as far as um, neighborhood um, involvement and groups, trying to get them more involved in their neighborhood. Very good. And uh, it looks like the response has been great so far. It's excellent. It's excellent. We're really happy to see the crowds at these different stops. And Diane, I know we've got other city departments being involved as well, so it's great for you all to get out, I guess, and answer some questions that community members may have that they may not get to see you on a regular basis. That's day. right. That's right. Um, we, we're providing information as we go around, speaking to people, tell them the importance of what we're doing in our department and asking for follow-up information from them. So hopefully we'll get more involvement by doing this tonight. And, and as we've said before, National Night Out and Neighborhood Watch is, is not just a police thing. It's not. I mean, it, takes, it takes everybody to come together to make this happen. Everybody within the city, and specifically it takes the neighborhoods to be involved. So by working with the city, we're going to see more and more involvement. Diane, thank you so much for joining Mark. us. For joining us now is Barry Dabert, who's the Administrative Division Director for Public Works. And Barry, I noticed you with a lot of other city departments jumped on the trolley tonight to get out in the community during National Night Out. Why did uh, your division and department feel it was so important to take part in National Night Out? Well, one of the divisions that uh, I'm in charge of happens to be the code enforcement. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people uh, call with questions about uh, weeds and, and trash in the yards and, and uh, uh the, the other um, things that affect neighborhoods, the quality of neighborhoods, and sometimes they call us and we and they've actually called the wrong department. And what, one of the things I want to accomplish tonight is get them to make a first call and have the right person answer the phone the first time, and not go up and down a, a phone tree and and have another person say, "Well, I'm sorry, but well, you called the wrong number, and you called the wrong number, and you called the wrong number," and and then they get frustrated and, and they either give up or by the time they finally get the right person. The, they've been given a runaround so long that they're irritating and they don't want to talk about the initial problem. So we want to give great customer service and expedite the process all at one time. That, that's exactly right. All right, Barry, now, not only can uh, what you were talking about, high weeds and, and things like that, can play a part in crime. Our viewers, you know, they have heard over the months now when we're talking about a safe damn coalition, it's not just the police department. So that's really a role that public works can play in keeping the weeds and things of that nature down around the city where uh, crime can grow. Well, a lot of the, the vacant houses and the, the rental properties that have been run down, dilapidated, have high bushes in front of the windows and, and uh, um, uh, high bushes by the street, and it actually kind of hides the house. Yeah. And one of the things that we ask a contractor to do is to not necessarily landscape the property, but trim up the stuff so that when you're driving down the street, you can see it. Plus, it gives a little bit more for aesthetics if the curb line shows or the sidewalk shows. Uh, it actually makes the neighborhood look a little bit better even though it, it the appearance of the houses may not be uh, prime real real estate you still get the appearance that there's somebody taking care of it absolutely now if our viewers have a question about the weeds in a yard things of that nature code enforcement who do they need to call uh, they can call uh, the public works number at 799-5245 right. and ask for a code enforcement 
uh, one of the, the first question they'll be asked is, is this a question for the north side of the river or the south side of the river? We have two inspectors, and they that's where their, their, their uh, lines are drawn, is one side of the river or the other. And then by answering that question, they'll get the proper person, and, and we'll try and give them an answer as quickly as possible to their question or complaint. Sounds good. Well, Barry, thank you so much for taking the time out to join us on this week's show and also for getting Public Works involved in National Night Out. We appreciate it. Thank you. That's what we're here for is to help the customers. Thanks, Barry. You know, I want to commend everybody on the trolley because as I talk to the people everywhere that we stop, they really like this. They say most of the time one or two officers may show up for National Night Out or something, but they're really excited that somebody from every department has taken time to stop by their yeah, National yeah. Night Out. Okay. So I want to take time and just commend everybody aboard and say thank you, okay? Now, we are at Cardinal Village, all right? They were established several years ago with their National Night Out program. They include four streets. Their coordinator for National Night Out is Constance Henderson. Now, their goals, their accomplishments, they've introduced Neighborhood Watch, they've involved residents, and they have a very successful after-school youth program. So let's go and tell them how proud we are of them for having this youth program that they put so much work into after school. That's fantastic for the kids. Let's go and tell them how much we appreciate them having us here this evening. And let's go be a part of Cardinal Village's National Night Out, everybody. All right. Now. Well, we're now over at Cardinal Village with Gary Wasson, who's the executive director of the Housing Authority here. And Gary, looks like uh, once again you all have one of the largest national night out parties happening right here in Cardinal Village. It seems like every year the numbers uh, keep continuing to grow. Yeah, we uh, we do make it a big effort. There's a lot of uh, volunteers that come together, and uh, and it is actually getting bigger every year. We've just uh, this new pavilion is uh, is an addition this year, first thing, and. Uh, got a new grill for people and it's uh, I think drawing them a little bit more out there for that so yeah we try to make it a big production right and talk about why it's so important not only the housing authority but all neighborhoods throughout the city of Danville get involved in National Night Out and Neighborhood Watch well it's important because people need to know their neighbors uh, if we're gonna make a, a difference in our community and you know be more secure where we live we need to know each other kind of look out for each other and that's what we try to work with our residents on just really getting to know each other uh, working with the community, we have several that community watches, mm -hmm. neighborhood watches, yeah, and uh, that's what we uh, uh, we just feel it's important that everybody gets to know each other. Right. Talk about the partnership of the Danville Police Department and working with Neighborhood Watch and, and the great partnership that you all have with the department. Well, we have a really good relationship with the department. They're very responsive to us, uh, willing to come out and talk to uh, us at events that we put on and and also even resident council meetings right. they'll come out we might only have a handful of folks but they don't mind whether there's a handful or there's a big group so we have a very good relationship with the police department and uh, I think they're a very key component it's good for the people to see them in a little bit different light Absolutely. too sometimes as a, than just the authority figure uh, they come in and, and you get to meet them as real people right. well Gary thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight it looks like another great event and uh, a great job here tonight well, thank you very much right. But joining us now is Constant Henderson, who is with the Cardinal Village Tenant Association and really has organized these wonderful events over the year for National Night Out. And I guess she is really the epitome of what Neighborhood Watch can be in your community. As you see here tonight, we've got hundreds of people out here taking part in some great festivities. And Constance, I just want to congratulate you for putting on such a great uh, party, I'll say, here thank in the community. You, thank you. Thank you. Um, it was my pleasure to do this. This is what I live for. Um, I've been in public housing for the past seven years and I've actually did this kind of work from day one, even before I became president of our tennis association. This was my way of giving back to my community. Talk about uh, the importance. I see all these youngsters here tonight from from infants all the way up to yes. 15, 16 teenagers and then uh, older adults as well. Why is it so important that we come together as a neighborhood, not only as a, at an event like this, but throughout the year just to get to know your neighbor? Well, one thing, um, we try to teach our residents that it takes an entire village 
to raise these children. One person can't do it you know, by themselves. So we ask asking our neighbors, look out for that child next door. Look out for that older resident next door. Um, our children do a lot of things. And uh, I, I'm teaching them not to always have their hand out to give back. Right. And, the, and the Lord truly is blessing our program and blessing them. And it is continuing to grow year after grow year. Grow year after year. Yeah. What, I, what I'd like you for, to do is talk to our viewers at home because we're trying to kickstart these neighborhood watch programs. We've got about 22 in the community now. And I know you work closely with Corporal TB Scares mm -hmm. with the Danville Police Department. But this has really been a success story. And we really want to see these grow throughout the community. Mm -hmm. So what have you done to make this such a successful neighborhood watch mm -hmm. uh, program here in Cardinal Village? Well, when I first moved over here, I started out with teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that if I could take this group of teenagers, take them to various activities outside, take them to colleges, take them to museums to see right. other things that hopefully would enhance them. everything that I had learned and went through in my life, I wanted them to have opportunity. And, and many of them have gone on to college because of that effort, I truly feel. Uh, secondly, we're working with, we have a tutorial program. Sometimes we have so many children in our tutorial room that we have to turn kids away, which we hate to do that. Yeah. But what we do, we feed our, we help our children with homework from the time they get off the school bus. They don't even go home. They come straight to us, we help them with homework. And then we do a little program ourselves. We work on reading and math. We concentrate on that. Like Danville has a year-round school, we have a year-round tutorial within our community. Right. And I would say that our our percentage for success has been probably 97 percent this year that maybe nobody failed. Well Constance I know uh, your tutorial program could be a real model for all tutorial programs across the state of Virginia because it has been very successful and you're really uh, reaching the youth at, at a real pivotal age in their mm -hmm. lives. So mm -hmm. I want to thank you uh, from the city of Danville. I know uh, the individuals within all of our departments would echo my sentiments stating that uh, you've done a real great job here and we appreciate all your hard work and uh, hopefully it continues to pay off for many generations to come. And I really, I need to thank, I thank God for what he's allowed me to do, but I have some wonderful helpers. Right. I can't do this without the support of housing, from the support of Mr. Watson, our, our manager here in our complex, Ms. Jones. If it was if I didn't have these people behind everything that I did, it wouldn't be a success. And because of them and the good Lord, you know, we're able to make it. Well, Casa, thank you so much for joining thank us. And thanks welcome. for the great job you've done here at Carnival. Thank you. Well, joining us now is the fire marshal for the city of Danville, no stranger to River City TV, Shelby Irvin, who hosts our Fire Watch monthly show here on River City TV. And Shelby, uh, tell me a little bit why you all thought it was so important for the fire department to take part in National Night Out this year. Well, the fire department has been a part of National out, Night Out ever since the beginning. Uh, it started years ago, and uh, it's a great opportunity for us to get out in the community more as we try to do it, any opportunity we can to get out in the community. But we feel we can get a close-up talk with all the neighbors together and hear their concerns and address the concerns that they have uh, for this, here in the city of Danville. And I know you're passing out some literature to the people tonight. Yes, I have some State Fire Smart uh, brochures that, um, that I'm giving to everybody, and I also have some get a grip fire safety um, little grip things to get Great. open jaws and lids and things like that Very good. as well. well Shelby thank you so much for taking the time to join us on this week's show but also thanks for allowing the fire department to be a part of National Night Out of the Year we revamped it this year and I think it's been a real success is that the feedback you've gotten so far certainly um, the people have just been um, just have been embracing us as soon as we get off the bus you know they want to come up they want to talk to us they have questions and uh, it's been a really good day well, Shelby thank you so much for joining us thank you well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's edition of the City Update. I hope you've enjoyed the behind-the-scenes look and National Night Out here in the city of Danville. We revamped um, the way that we handle National Night Out this year, and I think it's been a real success getting all the city officials and different organizations out to these different uh, block parties, I'll call them, here in the city of Danville celebrating National Night Out. I think it's been a, a real success. Again, if you would like more information in forming a neighborhood watch organization in your community, feel free to give our crime prevention office a call. 797-8898. Until next week, have a great day.